Hi everyone, it's Kelly here from Crafting a Cuppa and today I'm going to show you how to make the Young Hearts Run Free vest top. It's made to measure so you can use any yarn and any hook from your stash, just braid it, grab it, go, that sort of thing. My favourite sort of pattern. Um, so I've made a couple already in uh, cotton for summer. It's now starting to turn, it's October, it's going to be Halloween soon. So I've decided I'm going to make my next one in chunky yarn and I'm going to layer it over some shirts, um, tops, whatever really. I'm just going to do a bit of layering with this one. So I'm using chunky yarn, you can use whatever you wish. I've got a 7mm hook, again you don't have to use that, use whatever you want. You're going to need... <clears throat> A dressmaker's measuring tape because you are going to need to take your chest measurement because we're going to base this pattern on your body measurements so if you want to make it for somebody else you're probably going to need them to keep modeling it as you're working through the pattern you're going to need a pair of scissors some stitch markers uh, a tapestry needle I haven't got one to hand at the minute, but you are also going to need a bit of paper and a pen just so you can write down your measurements. Uh, one last thing, it's in US terms um, and just have fun with it. I mean, it's a very quick make. I'm, I can't wait to wake it in. Wake it? I can't wait to make it in my chunky because I think I'm just going to fly through it. So I think that's everything. Let's crack on. Hi. So you get to see my face on this tutorial. <gasps> Look at you. So I'm just here quickly because I'm going to show you how to measure your chest. We need to take your chest measurement because that is how long you're going to be making your foundation row. And we are going to be doing a foundation row because it's got a lot more stretch to it. Don't worry if you're like, I've never done one before because I'm going to show you how to do it nice and slowly. So this is why you need your dressmaker's measuring tape. So I'm just going to take my cardi off, quick, probably should have done that first, shouldn't I? Never mind, it doesn't matter. So you're going to take your tape measure, we're going to work in centimetres, so just come around the back, move my hair out the way, well I've just pushed it around the back instead, never mind. Just come around the back, round the front and you're going to go round the centre of your chest I know this arm's a bit in the way but can you see that I've gone round the center I'm not going underneath or above I'm just going right across my like, nipple area sorry I don't mean to be rude but that's exactly where I'm putting the tape measure I'm not pulling it tight because you pull it tight then that's not quite the right measurement just have it nice and loose just so it meets and mine says about 84 centimeters Okay, so I'm going to take my pen and my paper, which I haven't got ready, but that's okay. I'm in the craft room. I always have things to hand. I'm going to write down 84. And what you need to do, nice and easy, is minus four centimetres from that number. So mine's easy enough. It's going to be 80. 84 minus four is 80. And that, that is the number that you are going to do your foundation row to, okay? So mine is going to be 80 centimetres. And that's it. Okay, so to start this pattern, we're going to create a foundation half double crochet row. And we're doing that because it's got a lot more stretch in it compared to a chain. If you do a chain, you're going to struggle to get it over your head. Trust me, I know, because I did it. I've picked up a, a mustard colour because my brown wasn't showing up very well, unfortunately. It's a bit overcast here today. So I'm going to create a slip knot and pop it on my hook. Right, so what we're going to do is we are going to chain two. And then you're going to come back to your very first chain. We're going to yarn over. And we're going to insert our hook into that very first chain. Yarn over again and draw up a loose loop. Now I say loose, you're going to want it to kind of sit in line with the ones on your hook. So it's going to look a bit longer than the other two. But that's fine because if you do it too tight, then your foundation row is going to get really curved. 
I mean, it might be a bit slightly curved anyway, but this just helps to keep it looser. So what we're going to do now is you've got three hoops, hoop, bleh, bleh, three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over again and go through the very first loop only. Like so. Yarn over again and go through all three loops on the hook. And that's your first uh, foundation half double crochet. So again, what we're going to do is yarn over and you're going to come back to the stitch you've just created. And you're going to go through the top two loops right here. Go through those. If I can wiggle it through, there we go. Yarn over again and draw up a loose loop. You should have three loops on your hook going to yarn over again and go through the first loop only yarn over again oh hang on my yarn's a bit splitty there we go that leaves you with three loops on your hook yarn over again and go through all three loops and now you've got two half double crochet foundation whatever you want to call it foundation half double crochets right let's go again yarn over and go to that um the top of the stitch that you've literally just created as you can see it's right here you're going to go through the two loops yarn over and draw up a loose loop yarn over and go through the first loop only yarn over and go through all three loops on your hook let's do it again yarn over come to the stitch that you've just created and go through the top two loops yarn over draw up a loose loop i like to just give it a little wiggle yarn over and go through the first loop only oh no i've missed a bit again ah there we go yarn over and go through all three loops let's go again yarn over and come to this stitch that you've just created go through the top two loops yarn over and pull up a loose loop yarn over and go through the first loop only yarn over and go through all three loops so we've got let's have a look so basically you're looking at it like this and we're working into it like this but what we're doing is we're working into the bottom of the um stitch because when we've done this is going to be the top so we can count how many half double crochets we've got one two three four five i've done five so far so we're basically doing like a chain and a half double crochet all at the same time and this is perfect if you're making garments because like i say it's got so much more stretch and if you just do a chain and then work into it you don't really have an awful lot of stretch let's do a few more so as you can see that's the top i'm turning it back round again because we are working into the bottom so yarn over go through that very last stitch that you've just created through the top two loops yarn over and pull through a loose loop yarn over and go through the first loop only yarn over and go through all three loops on your hook again yarn over go through that very first oh well the last stitch that you created yarn over pull up a loose loop yarn over go through the first loop only yarn over go through all three loops i feel like i've lost a bit there what have i just done it's because my yarn is splitting let me do that one again so again let me show you again yarn over go through the last stitch that you created through the top two loops yarn over pull up a loose loop yarn over go through the first loop only 
yarn over go through all three loops on your hook let me just uh, loosen that a bit and that is what it will look like and as you can see it's starting to get a bit of stretch going on so we're going to keep doing that until you reach your measurement mine was 84 four centimeters was my chest and i took four centimeters away from that so i am working to 80 centimeters i mean i can't fit all this on the screen so i'm just going to do a little bit of my tape measure if i can keep it there so when you're measuring your foundation row i want you to just lay it flat against the tape measure i don't want you to stretch it to the furthest point I want you to just to keep it nice and flat until you get to your measurement. So mine is 80 centimetres. Yours might be a little bit different because we've all got different shapes and size chest. So yeah, what we need to do is once we've done this foundation row, we're going to join it together and start working in the round. Now, in total, we will need an even amount of stitches, but... For the time being, I want you to keep working to your measurement, but make sure that you have an odd number of stitches. Because when we join it in the round, we're going to do your final stitch, which is going to be your even number, and join it at the same time. So keep working until you reach your measurement, and make sure you have an odd number of stitches. And I will meet you back here, and we will join it together in the round. Okay, so I can't fit my whole tape measure into the frame, but I've made it to my 80 centimetres. I've currently got 81 foundation half double crochets. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a final stitch to make it even, and we're going to join it at the same time. So let's pick up our working end. So we're going to start off our stitch just like how we have been so you're going to yarn over and you're going to go through your previous stitch through the top two loops yarn over and pull up your loose loop so now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of like flip it because as i said before this is the bottom and this is the top and we now need to twist it like this yeah and we're going to run our fingers all the way through the half double foundation half double crochets all the way right to the beginning making sure that you don't twist it which brings us to here so now i'm at this end and i've got my yarn tail at the bottom rather than at the top which is how it was when i was doing my um, foundation row it's at the bottom so i'm going to just bring it round so that this bit is now on this side. So I'm literally gonna get my fingers and just flip it, just like that. So what we need to do is we need to go in the bottom of the very first chain. If you're like, oh, I'm not quite sure which one that is, just twist it up a little bit and it's gonna be the very first V. That's my second one. That's my first one tucked in right there. So I can see that V right there i'm going to flip it back to where it was and i'm going to go straight in there through the bottom okay so now you're going to grab your working end of yarn get my tension again we're going to yarn over and we're going to pull through that chain and also the first stitch on oh, first stitch sorry the first loop on your hook like so and then you're going to yarn over again and you're going to pull through all three loops on your hook and then you're going to find the very first stitch your very first half double crochet from the beginning of the row and you're going to put a slip stitch through there a slip stitch and you are now joined in the round with an even number of stitches 
just check it make sure that it's not got a twist in it there you go it's quite easy really isn't it but if you find you have struggled with that and you're like oh, i just cannot figure that out then there is another way to do it what what you can also do is Instead of doing an odd number, which I said to do, go to your measurement with an even number of half double crochet foundation stitches. And then what you can do is um, join it to your first half double crochet with a slip stitch and use your yarn tail to join the bottom. So if you are struggling, rather than doing an odd number and finishing your even number with the join, do an even number and just slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet and use your yarn tail to join the bottom. So that's another way to do it. But I quite like this way because then you haven't got to join it up. It's already done. So I'll meet you back here for round two because that is technically round one, all done and dusted. Okay, so we're ready to start round two. I've decided that I'm going to change colour because I was meant to be using brown originally but you couldn't see it very well for the foundation round. So I'm just going to attach my yarn in the previous stitch with a slip stitch. Which is right here. So for this round we're going to be doing something called the cross stitch. It's very easy. Oh, it literally is just double crochets. Let's get that in there. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to chain two that is not going to class as a stitch we're just doing that to get a bit of height so it's a bit awkward because i've changed color so this whole lump here is kind of like my first stitch so what you need to do is you need to skip the next stitch and go in the next one with a double crochet Then you're going to come back to the stitch that you've just skipped and put a double crochet in that one. And that's going to cross over those two stitches to form an X kind of shape, almost, <laughs> called the cross stitch. Skip your next stitch, double crochet in the next one. Come backwards to your skipped stitch and put a double crochet in there. And just keep repeating skip the next stitch double crochet in the next one come backwards to your skipped stitch and put a double crochet in there and again skip next stitch double crochet in the next one come back to your skipped stitch and put a double crochet in there we're going to keep doing this all the way around. I'll show you one more time. Skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next one. Come backwards to your skip stitch and put a double crochet in there. And this is what you should be getting, the cross stitch. So keep doing that and I'll meet you when you get to the end of the round. Right, so I'm at the end of round two. And I've just done my cross stitch here and I've got one stitch left and then I've got the bit where the chain two was. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into where the chain two is to start off our final cross stitch. So go in the same stitch as the chain two with a double crochet. Come back to your skipped stitch and put a double crochet in there. And then... We are going to join to the first stitch of the cross stitch from the beginning of the round. So not the chain two, skip those two chains and go straight in the top of your first DC of the cross stitch with a slip stitch to join. And that is round two. Right, now it's time for round three. Round three is nice and easy. It's just going to be a round of half double crochets. Now we are going to turn our work for this round and we're going to chain one, which does not class as your first stitch. So chain one and turn your work. Now you are going to put a half double crochet 
in the next stitch but you will be coming back and working your final stitch in the stitch with your chain one sounds a bit confusing but it's just to help keep uh the stitch the seam level so yarn over and go into your next stitch with a half double crochet and then place a half double crochet in every single stitch remember your stitch count mine's 82 it's going to be an even number yours is probably going to be different but you're going to need to put that amount of stitches or half double crochets around round three. So yeah, half double crochet in every single stitch. And then I will meet you back here when we are at the end of the round. Okay, so I've reached the end of my round. I've got one more half double crochet to place and it is going in the same stitch as the chain one. Just like so. And then you're going to attach it to your first half double crochet with a slip stitch. And that's round three, I believe we're on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is another round of cross stitch. So you're going to chain two and you're going to turn. Now this time, when we did the first cross stitch, we skipped a stitch and then went into the next stitch to start the cross stitch. This time we're just going to go straight in for our cross stitch and we're going to go in the very next stitch from your chain two with a double crochet and then you're going to come back to the stitch with the chain two in it and you're going to put another double crochet again this is just to keep the seam in line so carry on doing your cross stitches as normal skip next stitch go in the next one with a double crochet come backwards to your skip stitch and put a double crochet in there again skip your next stitch and go in the next one with a double crochet Come back to your skip stitch and put a double crochet in there. Skip the next stitch and go in the next one with a double crochet. Come back to your skip stitch and put a double crochet in there. So you're going to keep doing that to make your cross stitches all around the row, round, all the, all the way around round four. And I'll meet you back here when you get to the end. Right, I'm at the end of round four and I've got enough space just to do one more um, cross stitch in my last two stitches. So I've skipped a stitch, gone to the next one with a double, coming back on myself and going in the skipped one with a double. And then we're going to join it to the first double crochet of the first cross stitch. So go straight in the top of there with a slip stitch. And then round five, we're going to be repeating round three, which was our half double crochet round. So we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. And then we're going to go into the next stitch with your half double crochet. And then every single stitch with a half double crochet. Remember to keep your stitch count and that it's even. So just keep placing a half double crochet in every single stitch and I will meet you back here when we get to the end of this round. Right, right, I'm, I'm at the end of my next round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my last half double crochet in the same stitch as the chain one from the beginning of the round. And then join it with a slip stitch to the very first half double crochet. 
Now the next round is going to be exactly the same as the last one. We're going to do another round of half double crochets. So if you're sticking with the same colour, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Now I've decided I'm going to change colour so I can lighten it up a bit more so you can see what will be going on in the following round. Because we're going to be doing something a little bit different and you're going to need to see the stitches a bit better than what you can right now. So let me just turn this round. Right, I am going back to this lovely, gorgeous mustard. Tighten that on there with a slip knot. I'm going to join in my yarn with a slip stitch. Chain one, which doesn't class as your a stitch doesn't class as a stitch sorry and then you're going to half double crochet in the next stitch and then half double crochet in every single stitch every single stitch half double crochet and i'll meet you back here when we get to the end of the round. Okay, so I'm at the end of my round and I'm gonna place my final half double crochet in the same stitch as the chain one. So that goes in there. That one half double crochet and then I'm gonna join it with a slip stitch to my very first half double crochet from the beginning of the round. And that is round six, I do believe. Seven, six, six. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to I'm going to change colour for my next round. You don't have to. If you're not changing colour, again, chain one and turn your work. I'm going to change colour, so I'm just going to fasten off. Quickly get my new colour ready. Ooh, knocking everything over. Just going to open up this variegated yarn that I treated myself to. Does feel a little bit thinner than what I've been working with, but oh well, it's made to measure. Doesn't matter. It's really not going to matter too much, she says. <laughs> only time will tell all right let me just put a slip knot in there i don't even know what this looks like i might put it on and think they don't go and, well then i'm screwed because i don't think i've got any other colors to go with it right so i'm changing color so what i'm going to do is turn my work and attach i'm going to go in this one i think i'm going to go in the one next door so i can show you properly what i'm doing so I'm going to attach my yarn in the stitch with a slip stitch. Now for this round, I don't really know what the term is, but I'm calling it a half double crochet in the front loop only. Now when you do a half double crochet, there is three loops. So if you can see, if I turn it this way, We've got a normal V-shaped loop that we usually go into. We're not going to go into that. We are going to go into this front loop here. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. All of these front loops. And what that is going to do, that's going to push this V to the front of your top and just add a little bit of detail. Okay, so I've chained one. Remember to turn your work if you're sticking with the same colour. And you're going to put a half double crochet straight down into this loop here, right at the bottom. That is your front loop. Go straight down and put a half double crochet through that loop. Come in from the bottom, come out from the top. Okay? 
half double crochet straight down through that front loop and then the next one come in from the bottom have I yarned over no I haven't we're doing half double crochet so come in from the bottom and go out through the top half double crochet it may seem weird to begin with but once you start doing it it will become a lot more natural because the round tends to fall forwards after you've started doing a few so next one half double crochet through that front loop only again half double crochet through the next one then the next one in every single front loop half double crochet now if you was to just have a little look at the front as you can see that V that we normally go into has been pushed to the front it just gives this nice little bit of detail okay that's what we're doing I don't even know if there's a correct term for it but I've always called it half double crochet front loop only a bit of a mouthful go in the next one half double crochet every single front loop until there are no more left to go in remember to go in through the bottom and out through the top oh my yarn's got stuck in through the bottom out through the top and it pushes that v stitch to the front looks pretty cool doesn't it in from the bottom out through the top every single one and i'll meet you back here when you get to the end of the round i'm at the end of my round now because i started in my next stitch i've got to like find this little loop from the first stitch if you went straight down with your first one then your last stitch is going to be right here nice and easy to find but because mine was a bit busy and i wanted to show you clearly which loop we're going through i went and started on the next stitch so i'm just going to go through right the center here from the bottom and up and do my last front loop half double crochet and then we're going to join it to the top of the first stitch with a slip stitch voila right from here on out we are now going to be doing a herringbone half double crochet so what we're going to do is we're going to chain one turn your work go straight down into the very same stitch as your chain one you're going to yarn over and put your hook through the stitch and draw up a loop then you're going to immediately slip stitch through this second hoop on or loop on your hook so it might be a little bit fiddly to begin with it might feel fiddly hang on i'll get that one out of the way i think the first stitch always feels fiddly to me then you're going to yarn over and pull through the very last two loops i keep trying to call them hoops I don't know why why do i want to call them a hoop so we're going to be working in the top of every single stitch so your next stitch yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop immediately slip stitch through the second loop which leaves you with two hoops hoops so again look two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through both of those loops again yarn over go into your next stitch and draw up a loop immediately slip stitch through that second loop yarn over and pull through the last two loops here we go again yarn over go through the stitch and draw up a loop immediately slip stitch through that second loop which leaves you two yarn over and pull through the last two loops i keep wanting to say hoops hoops loops 
Right, yarn over, go in your next stitch, pull up a loop, immediately slip stitch through the second loop, yarn over and go through the last two loops. <laughs> How many times are I going to say loops? I'll do a few more with you. Yarn over, go through the next stitch, pull up a loop, got three loops, immediately slip stitch through that second loop. You've now got two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. Yarn over, go in your next stitch, pull up a loop, immediately slip stitch through the second loop. Yarn over, pull through the last two loops. I'll show you two more times. Yarn over, go in your stitch, pull up a loop, immediately slip stitch through the second loop. Yarn over, go through both loops. Yarn over, go in your next stitch, pull up a loop, immediately slip stitch through the second loop. Yarn over and pull through both. And that's the herringbone half double crochet. And it's got a bit of a, a lean to it. So when we get to the end of this round, we are going to turn after every round. And it kind of gives it a bit of a... I don't know if it's like a zigzaggy style, but it looks cool. Maybe you won't see it too much on mine because I've got crazy yarn. But you can see it better if it's a solid colour, I suppose. But yeah. So keep doing a herringbone half double crochet all the way around until you get to your final stitch. I'm now at the end of my round. I now need to join it to the first stitch with a slip stitch. And then you're going to chain one, turn your work and do a herringbone half double crochet in this first um, stitch. Go straight down, same stitch as your chain one. Sometimes I find if you do that last one a little bit looser, it's easier because sometimes that first stitch can be a bit tight, I find. That one wasn't too bad. So you're going to keep placing your herringbone half double crochet in every single stitch again. And we're going to keep doing this until your top sits right underneath your bust. So you will have to start trying it on soon. So herringbone half double crochet in every single stitch for the next however many rounds until you get underneath your bust. And remember, you have to turn your work after every round and go directly into your chain one, into the base of the chain one with your first herringbone half double crochet. So this is where it gets nice and easy. Just keep doing the same stitch. Or this could be the part where you lose the will to carry on because you're constantly doing the same stitch. But I'm using chunky, so it's not really not going to take me too long to get to under my bust measurement because there's not really a great deal uh, to cover in that area. <laughs> so yes, it won't take me very long. But this is where if you're making it for someone, someone else, you are going to need to put it on them to check that you are in the right spot. Because once we get under the bust measurement, like right, once we get under your bust, we're going to do some decrease rounds, although they are optional. So if you feel like you don't want to do any decrease rounds, then just keep doing your herringbone half double crochet until you get to the length that you desire. But remember, we're going to be adding ribbing to the bottom as well. However much ribbing you add, again, is going to be totally up to you. So if you feel like you want to decrease your top, then we are going to stop directly underneath your bust. So keep doing the herringbone, half double crochet until you reach under your bust, turning your round every round, chain one, herringbone, half double crochet in the same stitch as chain one. Okay, so you keep doing that until you get underneath your bust and I'll meet you here, meet you there. Meet you everywhere, meet you here, meet you there, so whatever, you get the gist.
see you soon right so i have worked my herringbone stitch and i've been trying my top on um and it now comes right underneath my bust so if you want to do a decrease round then follow what i'm doing if you tried it on you think oh, i don't really want to decrease it i'm happy with how it is then you are going to keep repeating the herringbone stitch until you're happy with the length okay and then after that we're going to add ribbing on so bear in mind that you will be adding ribbing to the bottom of your top um so if you want to decrease it and bring it in a little bit more then follow what i'm going to do next so what we need to do is we need to turn it round so that this seam is in the center so it's a bit tricky to see possibly but this is my seam right what we're going to do now is we're going to need uh three stitch markers oh gosh i'm getting all tangled of mine right three stitch markers we're not going to place one in the first stitch because that's where we're going to place our first decrease is in that very first stitch so what we need to do i'm just going to bring it down a little bit so i can see the back of my top so make sure that your seam looks like it's down the center like this flatten it out and then it doesn't matter too much where you put your decreases as long as they're pretty much even so I'm going to go at the side, I'm just going to put it through a stitch at the side and then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing, just place one in a stitch at the side and then I'm going to place one right in the centre, it is technically the front of your top but obviously I'm not going in this front bit, I'm going through the back, right in the centre. So you should have three stitch markers evenly placed and that is where you're going to do each of your decreases. So we're going to decrease four times because we're going to do the first stitch as a decrease. There's no point putting a stitch marker in that because it's the very first stitch. So let me get my hook. Like so. I've already chained one. Hang on, let me undo that. Probably got a little bit ahead of myself and then just left it. So we're going to chain one, like so. Turn your work and going straight down into the very first stitch with your chain one, we're going to do a herringbone half double crochet two together. What a long stitch name, but that's what we're going to do. So you're going to yarn over. And you're going to place your hook in that very first stitch if i can get it in there i've done my chain a bit tight i think and <clears throat> oh my voice is disappearing right and now you're going to yarn over and draw up a loop just like we did for the herringbone and you're going to slip stitch that first loop through the second one which leaves you with two loops on your hook now we're not going to finish the stitch what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing in the very next stitch so yarn over insert your hook into the very next stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop you should now have four loops on your hook you're going to slip stitch the first loop into the second one like so and that should leave you with three loops on your hook you're going to yarn over and go through all three loops and what that has done is created one herringbone stitch across two stitches so you've made two stitches turn into one stitch and then all the rest of these other stitches are just going to be the normal uh, herringbone half double crochet that you've been doing we're going to keep doing this oh hang on what's going on with my yarn it's all over the place keep placing your half um, herringbone half double crochets in every stitch until we reach the next stitch marker so 
So yeah, herringbone half double crochet in every single stitch until you reach that stitch marker. Really love the, this yarn. It's ever so lovely. I don't normally use this type of yarn. I'm quite bad with sticking to my normal solid colours because I like to have control over what the colour's going to be. But the colours are just so mixed up. It, yes, yeah, I, I just love the texture that it's giving as well. Yes, yeah, very nice. Really nice. Okay, I'm coming up to my stitch marker. One more to go and then I've reached my stitch marker. So I'm going to take that one out and then we're going to do another. All right, I've got to try and get it all out because it's so long. Herringbone, half double crochet, two together. So yarn over, go into your stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, slip stitch that first one through the second loop, which leaves you with two. Then you're going to come to your next stitch, yarn over, place your hook in that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, which leaves you with four, slip stitch through the very first loop, leaves you with three, and then you're going to yarn over and go through all three loops. So I've just decreased two stitches again into one. So we're going to keep doing your half, but herringbone half double crochet until we get to the next stitch marker. I'm just going to pause this and meet you back here in a second. So I have now reached my second stitch marker. So I'm going to remove that one and do another decrease stitch in the next two stitches. So we're going to yarn over, go in that very first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop and bring that loop straight through that second one, which leaves you with two on your hook. Yarn over and go in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop and slip stitch through the very first, or the second stitch, sorry, the second loop. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> I hope which leaves you with three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops then we're going to do that again just doing the normal half um her why do i keep calling it a half herringbone herringbone half double crochet all the way up to your final stitch marker so i'll meet you here again when you get to your final stitch marker Right, I've just reached my last stitch marker, so I'm going to remove that one and do my final decrease stitch of this round. Yarn over, go in the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then I'm going to slip stitch that loop through the second one. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, slip stitch it again through that second one, yarn over and pull through all three loops and there we go so we've just done four decrease stitches i'm now sorry i'm now continuing with the herringbone half double crochet again until i get to the end of the round so hopefully you've been keeping tally of your stitch count all you're going to do now is minus four from that number every time you do a decrease round you are going to minus four from your stitch count now, how many decrease rounds you do is completely up to you. I think um, with my other top, I did about three, but try it on. So once I've done this round, I'm going to try it on, see what I think to the fit. If I want to decrease a bit more, I'm going to repeat this exact same round that I've just done. I'm going to lay it out flat like I've just done as well and put my stitch markers in the sides and one in the centre front. And I'll keep doing decrease rounds until I'm happy with the fit.
right I'm at the end now I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch which was a decrease stitch your herringbone half double crochet two together I actually said it without thinking about it yay so yeah you're going to join with a slip stitch to that very first stitch so what I would suggest now is to try it on I mean you've only done one decrease round haven't you so you probably might want to do another one uh sorry I've just knocked the camera oops sorry so you might want to do um one more two more three three more who knows but keep trying it on and keep doing that decrease round that we've just done until you are happy with the fit of your top and then I'll meet you back here again see you soon right so I've just done two decrease rounds I've tried it on and I'm actually happy with that now it's up to you how many decrease rounds you add you can have more than that or less or none whatever but I've just done two I'm happy so what we're going to do now is we're going to continue with the herringbone half double crochet all in rounds turning after every round and you're going to keep doing that until you feel happy with your length but remember that we're going to be adding ribbing on the bottom so you need to keep that in mind as well but yeah it's up to you how long you feel like you want it to be i keep wondering what this might be like in dress form although i might have to uh increase when you get near the hips but maybe that's for another time <laughs> maybe in the summer not in the winter which we're now coming up to making a vest in the winter oh, that's why i've done mine in chunky though so i can wear mine with shirts and tops and stuff it's quite versatile so yeah right so keep doing your herringbone half double crochet until you are happy with the length of your top and i will meet you back here uh when but when it's time to do the ribbing sorry i can never get my words out right i'm trying though i'm trying <laughs> right see you soon okay so i decided to add two extra rounds of the herringbone half double crochet just to add a little bit of extra length to it you can add as much or as little as you want and i'm now going to head into the ribbing so i've decided i'm going to be wearing mine with high-waisted trousers or skirts isn't it great that we can just make our own clothes to the length that we want isn't that great that is big old pat on the back for us haha <laughs> so right time for the ribbing so i'm going to change color if you're sticking with the same color but you're currently facing the wrong side you are going to need to chain three and turn your work because we are now working from the right side only okay but i am going to change color i'm just going to do it with a slip stitch if you're changing color change it however you wish i'm just giving you the basics on how to make this but you can do it whatever you please right where's my new color right let me just go into my stitch with a slip stitch this is much chunkier this yarn is than what i've just been working with i've got a mixture going on here but that's okay because it's made to measure so it doesn't matter right so what we're going to do is chain three and that is going to class as your first stitch which is double crochet oh can not pull it through look so we're going to be placing nice and easy a double crochet in every single stitch and remember your top needs to be right side facing you so you've got this lovely detail here that we did with um, the half double crochet in the front loop was it i think it was the front loop so i've had half term i've had to like pause recording for a week so i'm kind of a bit like oh, i'm recording the right bits now <laughs> so yes right side facing and you need to put a double crochet in every stitch your chain three classes as your first double so yeah lovely and easy one double in every stitch oh this yarn is much thicker than what i've just been using 
gorgeous colour though. Love the way this top is coming out actually. Quite excited to see what it's going to be like layered over some tops. I've just recently bought some cropped shirts which are perfect for vests. I've got about three or four of them in my wardrobe at the moment. So yeah, keep placing double crochet in every single stitch. Remember your stitch count. Remember that it's meant to be even. And I'll meet you back here when you get to the end of the round. Okay, so I'm right at the end of my round. Nearly pooped my pants a little bit because I thought I was about to play a game of yarn chicken. But we have got a bit of a chunk left, thank goodness. So we're just going to join this round with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three from the beginning of the round. There we go. Now I'm changing colour again. So I'm going to fasten off. Just bear with me a second while I swap over my colour. I've hardly got any of that beautiful mustard left. It's a, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure where I'm going yet with this, with straps and that. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens, really, won't we? I'm just going to change my colour over to brown. Ooh. Where's the end of it? Right, let me just rejoin my yarn. Okay. So what we're going to do now, let me just draw my yarn in, sorry, hang on. We will slip stitch. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to chain one. And we're going to do a front post double crochet straight down around this DC bar from the previous round. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to place my hook to the right of this DC bar. And I'm going to go straight behind it and pop out through the left hand side. I'm going to yarn over, draw up a loop. I've got my three loops on my hook like I'm going to do a double crochet. Yarn over and pull through the first two yarn over and pull through the last two that is a front post double crochet now i'm going to do a back post double crochet around the next dc bar from the previous round so what i'm going to do is i'm going to yarn over and i'm going to go from the back so can you see my finger poking in there that is where i need my hook to go through that exact same spot so i'm going to twist it round come in through the back and I'm going to go over the top of this DC bar and straight out through the back. Yarn over, pull through a loop, so you've got three on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the last two. And that is a back post double crochet. Now I'm going to repeat that again, I'm going to do front post, so yarn over and I'm going to go in through the front and around the back, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the first two loops, yarn over and pull through the last two loops. Now I'm going to do a back post, so I'm coming in through the back where my finger is, yarn over, go in round the back and over the front of that post and back out through the other side, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops, yarn over and go through the last two loops. So you're just going to keep repeating front post double crochet, back post double crochet, front post double crochet, back post double crochet. So I am now on front post again. So I'm going to go in and behind this DC bar from the previous round, draw up a loop and do my double crochet, yarn over and go through the first two, yarn over and go through the last two. 
Now I'm going to do the back post double crochet, yarn over and come in through the back and go across the front of the DC bar and back through the back again. <laughs> yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through the last two. And you can see the ribbing effect is starting to appear already. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Front post, double crochet. Back post, double crochet. Front post, double crochet. Back post, double crochet. Just alternating between front and back all the way around front back front and back so I am going to keep doing my front and back front and back and I'll see you back here when we get to the end of the round okay okay so I'm at the end of my round you might notice that my top looks a little bit different from the previous video I just wasn't feeling that round of mustard if I'm honest I kept looking at it and I was thinking I'm not happy with that so I just pulled it out I've just redone the whole thing in brown but all is not lost because I feel like the mustard has helped you guys to see how to do the front post and back post double crochet a lot clearer than what the brown would have. But ultimately, I am much happier with it just being brown. So I'm at the exact same spot where I was a second ago, but I'm at the end of my round. So your last stitch is should be a back post double crochet. So I'm going to place my back post double crochet. And I'm going to join my round in the first front post double crochet with a slip stitch. Right in the top of that stitch, a slip stitch. So that's my first round of ribbing. So you're going to repeat that round until you're happy with the length of your top and your ribbing. So what I'm going to do for the next round is chain one. And we're going to go straight down around that front post double crochet but there's going to be a little bit next to it which is your chain one so this is going to be a little bit thicker than the other ones but that's because you've got your chain one in there from the previous round so we chain one and then we go and do a front post double crochet straight down through that chunk I'd like to call it and then your back post And then your front post and then a back post basically we're just doing exactly the same as what we've just done so you're placing your front posts around your previous front post and your back post around your previous back post and that's going to make these bits that are sticking out here the ribbon taller so just keep going this is my back post front post, back post, front post. You're just going to keep repeating these rounds of front post and back post until you're happy with the length. I think I'm going to aim for about my belly button because like I said I want to wear mine with high-waisted trousers and skirts um, but you go as long as you want. So I'll meet you back here when you've done your ribbing. Right, so I have finished my ribbing and I'm happy with my length. So the next thing we're going to be doing are the straps. So now what you need to do is look in the written description of the video and you will see measurements, one for the front straps and one for the back straps. Now you can use these measurements or you can do place like place the straps wherever you want basically uh, my testers use the measurements 
I think as far as I'm aware most of them used the measurements and they all said that they were okay but it's your own top we're all different shapes and sizes if you place your stitch markers and you try your little top on and you think no I'm not happy with that I just need to move it over a little bit more then do so okay we need you to be happy with what you've made don't we so what we need to decide now is where you want your seam to sit so we've got a seam going down the back of the top at the moment anyway. Down here is my seam. Now you can either have it so that it's in the centre back or you could have it so it's at the side. I've made a few of these now and I've mixed and matched. I've got one down the back, one down the side. Um, I didn't mind either so I've made it quite optional as to which whereabouts you have yours. I've decided on this one, I am going to go for a side seam. So, once you've decided where your seam is going to go, which for me, that's the side, you're going to have it so that your front is facing you. Well, because my seam is at the side, it doesn't really matter. If you've gone for your seam down the centre, you're going to have to flip your top over so that you've got the front facing you. And what you're going to need for this section is your tape measure and some stitch markers so what we're going to do is we're going to measure the front first now i'm going to use my measurements because i know they fit my body okay i'm making a size small so the measurements i'm using might not be the same for you if you're making a different size so please go check um the measurements in the written description of the video for the correct size that you are making so I'm making a small and it suggests to measure nine centimetres in from each side. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my tape measure. I'm just going to measure nine centimetres and I'm going to pinch the stitch that the, the nine centimetres falls on and put a stitch marker in it. So what I like about this top, it's uh, it's kind of eye eyeballing it really. It's not very like, oh, you have to do this many stitches, that many stitches. We're just eyeballing it. We're being relaxed. Just having a relaxing crocheting session. Sorry, I'm babbling. I'm going to be quiet now. I'm going to do the exact same thing the other side. Measure my nine centimetres. Pinch it. And put my stitch marker through here. So that is through the front only. I didn't go through the back. I just went through the front only. I'm going to need two more stitch markers because now I'm going to measure the back. So I'm just going to carefully flip it over. Just like that. Bish, bash, bosh. And this time my measurement says to measure 10 centimeters so that the back actually the straps come in a little bit um less than what the front ones do i don't know why i did it like that i think it's just how my bra was sitting at the time if i'm honest and that's why i did it like that so that the straps came in a bit more on the back panel compared to the front only slightly only a centimeter for mine anyway it might be different for the others. I can't quite remember what exact measurements I wrote down, but they'll all be there in the written description. So I'm going to measure 10 centimetres for this one, which brings me to this stitch. And then do the same for the opposite side, which brings me, oh, I've just lost it, to this one. And now we're ready to start doing the straps. Okay, let me just get my yarn ready. So we are going to do the right strap first and we're going to start on the back panel. So you're going to have your back panel facing you and you're going to start on the right hand side. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in the stitch before the stitch marker. So to the right of the stitch marker you're going to place your hook join in with a slip stitch and 
I'm going to chain three. I'm going to take my stitch marker out now because I don't really need that in there. And we're going to do a cross stitch in the next two stitches. So you're going to skip the next stitch and you're going to go in the next one with a double crochet. And then you're going to come back to this stitch that you've just skipped and place a double crochet in there. And then you're going to come to your next stitch and place a double crochet in there. And that is the first row of your strap. Next, you're going to chain three and turn your work around. Now your chain three classes as your first double crochet. Is that how I've done it? Yeah, that is. Sorry, I was just double checking that is how I've done it. And that is. So what we're going to do now is we're going to place a double crochet in the next two stitches. So another double crochet in the next stitch and another double crochet in the top of your turning chain from the previous round. So in that top chain of your chain three, you're going to place your final double crochet. Like so. That's round two. And I'm just going to keep repeating those two rows. I just said round two, didn't I? Row two. Right, then we're going to chain three, turn your work, place a cross stitch in the next two stitches. So you're going to skip the first stitch and go in the next one with a double crochet. And then you go it back into the stitch that you've just skipped with another double crochet. And then you go into the top of the turning chain from the previous round in the top of the third chain and place your final double crochet. So the next round is just a I keep saying round, I am very sorry. The next row is just the DC row. So we're going to chain three. Let's get a bit more yarn. Turn our work. Going to go in the very next stitch of a double crochet. Next stitch, double crochet. Final stitch, which is the top of your turning chain from the previous round. I always find if I twist it and go through the top, just go straight in. If you like try and get in it, oh, I can't get it out. Look, if you're trying to go in through this way, sometimes you only pick up one loop and it can be a bit like tight to get in. So I just pick it twist it towards me and just go straight through that top bit with a double crochet next round again ne stop saying round next row sorry is the cross stitch chain three turn your work as it gets a bit longer you don't have to keep turning the whole thing So cross stitch, skip the, the next stitch and go in the next one with a double crochet. Come back to that skip stitch and put a double crochet in there. And then a double crochet at the top of the turn and chain from the previous row. Chain three turn and it's your row of double crochets so double crochet in the next stitch and the next one and also the top of the turn and chain from the previous row oh wiggle that through there chain three Next row is the cross stitch again, so skip the next stitch and go in the next one with a double crochet. Come back to your skip stitch with a double crochet and then your final double crochet in the top of the turning chain from the previous row. Then the next one is your DC. I'm talking in short form again. 
is your double crochet row chain three turn double crochet in the next stitch and the next one and in the top of the turn and chain from the previous row now you're going to have to check back to the written description again and that will give you a measurement for your strap now there's two measurements that i've got there one is if you're using cotton yarn and another one is if you're using acrylic now acrylic uh, it's got a lot more stretch to it so the acrylic one is a shorter strap the cotton one is longer because it doesn't stretch as much now again obviously work towards this measurement and see how you get on with it if you feel that your strap is too loose or too tight then adjust it to suit your body shape mine is just a guide I think actually the test has got on all right with it, but same like I've just said a little while ago, we all have different body shapes, don't we? So you don't want to make it and then the, the strap keeps falling down. I did that with one of my other ones and I'd finished the whole thing and had all the details going on and it just kept falling down and I was like, this isn't right, I need to redo it. And I, I just went back and did it, as painful as it is to frog it, I went back and I did it and I'm so happy that I did because I love wearing it all the time now. So. The measurements, I'm using acrylic yarn, I'm making a size small, and my measurements say, let me just double check, oh, where are we? <laughs> about 24 centimetres. Now, where are we? Your final row will need to be the row of double crochets, not the cross stitch row. It will need to be the double crochet row. So although it says 24 centimeters for a size small as long as it's near it doesn't have to be bang on because you're probably not going to get it bang on because it needs to end on this double crochet row so i'm just going to lay mine out like this get my tape measure i'm clearly nowhere near 24 centimeters but i'm just showing you how i'm going to measure mine i'm not going to stretch it out or anything like that it just needs to be flat I'm just going to go from the base and out. Ooh, I don't like the number I'm on. Number 13. Unlucky for some. I'm not a massive fan of that number, but hey-ho. So yeah, I've got a little way to go. So I'm going to keep doing my strap and I'll meet you back here when I'm at roughly 24 centimetres. Remember, check your size, check your measurements chart because yours might be different to what mine is. Um, and it needs to end on the double crochet row, not the cross stitch row. So I'll meet you back here when you have your measurement. Okay, so I've added a few more rows to my strap. I'm now going to measure it. Now my measurement said for size small, roughly 24 centimetres. Now I'm at 23 and on my last row was the DC row and that's what you need to end on in order to attach it to the front. So remember to check the sizing for what, what size you're working on, the strap sizing anyway, because yours might not be 24. And it depends as well, like I said before, on what um, yarn you've used, whether it's acrylic or cotton. So mine, acrylic, size small, says aim for 24. I'm at 23, I'm gonna try the smaller option first because once I attach my strap, I'm gonna go try it on and make sure that I'm happy with it. So what we are gonna do, turn your top around so that you've got the front facing you now. I'm gonna get my strap and make sure that that's not twisted in any way, shape or form. I'm going to get my hook. Like so. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the very first stitch before the stitch marker. Just like how we attached the strap in the first place on the back panel, we're gonna go through the wrong side of the front panel not the right side. So you're gonna go through the wrong side and we're gonna slip stitch it. Slip stitch this to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back through my first stitch. I'm not gonna do a chain or anything like that. I'm just gonna wiggle this through here. 
and grab my front panel and I'm going to go through the first stitch before the stitch marker and I'm going to slip stitch through both of those. And then I'm going to come to my next stitch on my strap and then I'm going to go through my stitch with the stitch marker in it. I'm going to keep the stitch marker in place because I don't know if my strap is going to be the right length yet. So I'm going to want to try it on. If I just let me just make sure I've gone through all my bits here, yeah, I have. I'm going to want to try this on. So I'm going to keep the stitch marker in place just in case the strap is too short or not, um, it's too long. So it's just easier to keep this stitch marker in place. So we're going to do a slip stitch through both of those stitches. I've got two left to do. So I'm going to go through my one on the strap first and then I'm going to come to my next stitch. A little bit fiddly because I've got the stitch marker there, but you'll be fine. Go through both stitches with a slip stitch. And then my last stitch on my strap is the turning chain, the top of the turning chain from the previous row. Go through that one and the final stitch on the front panel. Oh, someone's car alarm's going off. Don't know if you can hear that. Oh, no. I've turned it off that's all right go through both stitches e -e -e, with a slip stitch like so now i'm going to pull a big old loop on here and i'm not going to fasten off just yet because i want to try this on and see what it's like so i am now going to go try on my top to see if i'm happy with my strap and I'll meet you back here in a second. You go do the same thing as well. If it's too long, then you're going to need to take a couple of rows away. If it's too short, try adding two extra rows um, and then reattaching till you're happy with the length. So I'll meet you back here when you're happy with the length. And then we will do the exact same process for that one. <laughs> My words have disappeared. That strap. That one right there. So I've just tried my top on. I am really happy with the length of my strap and the placement. Um, so I'm going to fasten off. What I did do, I just redone my drawing um, because I wasn't happy with how it went where the stitch marker was. So I'd redone it and I've just removed my stitch marker because I know that I am happy with the length. So I'm just going to fasten off. And now we're going to do the same thing for the second strap. So what we're going to do, exactly the same, we're going to work from the back first. Now I've done a side seam. Now I know that this is my back because I've placed my strap a little bit further in than the front. That's a good way of telling which way is the back and the front if you've done a side seam like what I've done. Obviously, if you seam down the center, you're going to know. If you do it down the center, you are going to try and want to get the uh, stitches a little bit even. I didn't think to mention that because I've done a side seam. Look. But yeah, if you're doing your uh, seam down the center, try and get your stitches even in between if you can. It's great when you miss things out on a video tutorial, hey! But that's alright because you've not done that side yet, so you just got to match it to that one. Bob's your uncle, as they say. Okay, so we're now going to do the next side and we're going to work from the back as well that we've just done. So let me just put a slip knot on my hook. Okay, so what we're going to need to do for a start is count how many rows you've got. Because you're going to need to do the exact same amount of rows for this side. I haven't counted mine, but no doubt I'll pause the video and then I'll have a quick butchers. So what we're going to do for this side is coming from the back and working on the front of the back. This time you are going to count backwards two stitches from your stitch marker. So my stitch marker is here. I'm going to go one, two, and I'm going to place my hook in that second stitch from the stitch marker 
and join my yarn with a slip stitch. And now I'm going to continue doing the first row, which was the cross row, the cross stitch row. So I'm going to chain three, I'm going to skip my next stitch and go in the next one, which is where my stitch marker is. I'm going to take that out because I know I'm happy with where that's going. So place a double crochet, come back to your skip stitch and place a double crochet and then go to your very next stitch and place a double crochet. Then we're going to chain three, turn your work, go in the next stitch with a double crochet and the next one with a double crochet and the top of your turn and chain with a double crochet. You should do what you're doing now because you've just done it once on the other side look. I'll do a couple more rows with you anyway. So the next row is the cross stitch row, chain three, turn your work, skip the next stitch and go in the next one with a double crochet and then come back to the other one with a double crochet and then go in the top of your turn and chain with a double crochet. Chain three, this is your row of doubles. Go to the next stitch with a double crochet. Next stitch, double crochet. Next, to, well, turn and chop with the turn and chain, double crochet. And you're going to keep repeating those two rows until you have the exact, exact amount of rows for the other strap. And once you've done that, I'll meet you back here and we'll join it to the front together. Okay, so I now have the same amount of rows for my second strap than for what I do in my first one. So we're now going to attach it to the front panel. So I'm just going to make sure again that this strap is completely straight and not twisted. And I'm going to come to the wrong side of my front panel. And remember, this time we are counting back two stitches from your stitch marker. So one, two, and you are going to go in that second stitch from the stitch marker. So I'm just going to get my strap ready. Let's get a bit of yarn going. Here we go. I'm going to come back into the same stitch on my strap. <laughs> Getting all of my words muddled again. I'm going to put my hook through there, ready to go. I'm going to find that second stitch after my stitch marker. I'm going to go straight through there and I'm going to put a slip stitch through both of these stitches. Wiggle that in if I can. Here it comes. Lovely. I'm just going to pull it tight. I'm going to go through my second stitch on my strap and then the next stitch on the front panel. Now the next one should be the one with the stitch marker. I am pretty certain that I am happy with my top, although I am going to try it on again once I've put this second strap on, but I'm going to put all my faith in it right now and I'm going to remove my stitch marker. <gasps> Living life on the edge. If it's not right, then I'm just going to have to undo it and remeasure. Not the end of the world, but I'm going to go through my next stitch and the next stitch which should have your stitch marker in it unless you've been crazy like me and took it out I'm going to put slip stitch through the both of those stitches and then the final one which goes through your top of your turning chain on your strap and just a regular stitch on the front panel and slip stitch through both of those and there we are now I'm going to go try mine on before I fasten off, although I'm pretty certain it's going to be awkward because this one was nice and snug. I like mine snug. I don't like straps that keep falling off all the time. It's just really, really annoying. So either way, I'm still going to try it on. And then, like I said before, if you've done a side one like me, you're going to know that this is the back because the straps are sitting slightly towards the middle compared to the front. We're nearly done. 
Right, I am happy with both of the length of my straps. I've tried it on, it fits lovely and snug. So what we're gonna do now is the last part of the pattern where we are just going to add some edging around the straps and the neckline. So let me get my yarn. So you're going to need your top so the back is facing you. Again, if you've done a side seam like me, you'll know which is the back because the straps sit closer to the middle than what they do on the front. So same place as where you put your first strap in, we are going to go on the right hand side of the back panel and we are going to start on the strap. So I'm just going to like turn my top around a little bit. Pick up my strap. I'm going to call this the edge, the DC bar. So we're going to work around the DC bars on the edge of the strap. So right at the bottom, I'm going to attach my yarn with a... Actually, I'm going to attach my yarn with a single crochet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my hook through there, grab my working end. I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop. I've got two loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through both loops. Now I've just attached with a single crochet. I'm now going to put another single crochet in here. And now I'm going to do a pico on the top of that single crochet. So I'm going to chain three. And then you're going to come back to the very first chain that you made and put your hook through it and create a slip stitch. So pull through a loop and then pull that loop through the only loop on the hook. And that's your pico. I'm going to do one more single crochet in around the same DC bar. Right, I'm going to come on to the next DC bar and do two single crochets. Then the pico, chain three slip stitch in the very first chain one more single crochet again two single crochets and then the pico chain three slip stitch in the very first chain and then place another single crochet. Now if you're doing this and you're finding that it's a bit bunched or you think you've got too many stitches going on, just depends on the thickness of the yarn because my yarn's quite thick so I might knock that last single crochet off mine. If you're using a thinner yarn, three single crochets in around the DC bar is a good number. But if you're using a thicker yarn like me, you can knock off that final um, single crochet. And I think I might do that just to be a bit confusing, everybody. I do apologise. If you're using a thinner yarn, keep doing what I've just done. Two single crochets, a pico and a single crochet back in around that same DC bar. But because I'm using chunky yarn, I feel like I'm cramming too much in there. So what I'm going to do is two single crochets and a pico. Right, so I'm back at my beginning. I've already got two single crochets around my DC bar. So because I'm using a thicker yarn, I'm just going to do my pico, which is chain three. Did I just chain three? I can't, oh, sorry, I'm messing it up now, isn't I? But yeah, I did chain three. Let's do it again. One, two, three. And then I'm going to join, well not join, I'm going to put a slip stitch in my first chain to create my pico. Now I'm going to go straight to my next DC bar and put two single crochets pico, two single crochets pico. But if you've got a thinner yarn, then do what I did in the beginning, which is two single crochets pico and another single crochet around that DC bar. But because I'm using chunky, it's just too much for me. Do what you prefer. Have a go with one, see if you like it. If you don't, then do the other one. So I'm putting... I am putting two single crochets around the next DC bar. 
chain three and a slip stitch in my first chain oh in my first chain to create the pico oh, i can't do it now <laughs> it's blowing me up right next dc bar two single crochets and a pico which is chain three slip stitch to your first chain next dc bar two single crochets and then a pico chain three slip stitch to the first chain well through the first chain next dc bar two single crochets chain three slip stitch to the first chain So my, my other tops that I've made, this is now my fourth or fifth top. All my other tops, I did the two single crochet, Pico, and another single crochet in the same DC bar. And they're all absolutely fine. But this is the first time that I have used Chunky Yarn. My other ones were DK and Aran Weight. I've made two out of the Aran Weight and one DK. And they were both fine. So it just depends on your yarn, I suppose, and your hook that you're using. It just felt a little bit too much for this, but this feels a bit better. Now that I've knocked off a single crochet. Right, two single crochets around the next DC bar. Chain three. Slip stitch in the first chain. Get some more yarn going. Next DC bar two single crochets, chain three, slip stitch in the chain, first chain, sorry, next DC bar, two single crochets, chain three, slip stitch in the first chain. So you're going to keep repeating that until you get to your final DC bar. And I'll meet you back here where we will go around the underarm together. Right, I've gone in every single DC bar. And now I need to come on to my top and we're going to go around the underarm. So you're going to go in the very first stitch, which has also got your slip stitch where you've attached your strap. And all we're going to do is place a single crochet in every stitch around the bottom of the underarm. So just go in there with a single crochet and every stitch with a single crochet all the way around the bottom of the underarm I'll meet you back here when you get to the end of the round Okay, so I'm now coming back to the beginning of the round. I'm going to place my final single crochet in the same stitch that has got my slip stitch where I attached the strap. Just in there, single crochet. And then I'm going to find the first single crochet that went around the DC bar of the strap and go through that and join the round together with a slip stitch. And there we have it. Just check it looks okay before I fasten off. Yeah, very pretty. That's a little tricky to see because I'm using a variegated yarn, but don't worry if your strap goes over a little bit because you're going to be working around this side as well. So yeah, I'm going to fasten off. We're going to do the exact same thing for the other strap. just pull it tight there but this time you are going to flip your top so you've got the front facing you and then you're going to attach again just like you have done around the right hand side the first seam um, the first DC bar of the strap and you're going to do the exact same thing as what you've just done for the other one so I'll meet you back here when you've got two edges 
from the outside and then we will do the neckline and the inside of the strap and then it's done okay we're now on to the final part of the pattern where we're just going to put some single crochets all around the um, inside of the strap and the neckline so again you're going to need your top so it is the back is facing you and we're going to start from here and we are going to join in in the, the the stitch on on your top so i can't get my words out right this stitch here on your top which also has the slip stitch from the strap in it so we're going to go in there so let me just get my yarn ready so i'm going to join my yarn in this stitch with the slip stitch in it and i'm going to join it with a single crochet like i did a little while ago so i'm going to put my hook through the stitch get my working end yarn over and pull up a loop i've now got two loops on here and i'm just going to yarn over and pull through both loops and then i'm going to put a single crochet in every single stitch across the neckline of the top Keep going with single crochets in every single stitch until you reach the final stitch that also has the slip stitch in it where you attach the strap. Oh, hang on. Which is here. So I'm going to put a single crochet in here. Now we're going to be working on the DC bars on the opposite side. So if you put three single crochets along each DC bar for the other side, then you're going to put three along for this one. Now, because I'm using a thicker yarn, I knocked mine down to two. So I'm going to place two single crochets around every DC bar on the edge of the strap. So going in the first one, two single crochets. Next one, two single crochets. Remember, if your yarn is thinner, you might need to be using three single crochets rather than two. Just have a play about and see which one you like the best, what works best for you. Two single crochets in every DC bar. Go in two single crochets or three if your yarn is thinner. Ooh. Now coming near the end of my strap. Last one. Two single crochets around my final DC bar and then that brings me back to the original top and I'm going to go with a single crochet in that stitch which also has your slip stitch in it. And now we're just going to do exactly the same thing as what we've just done. So single crochet in every stitch all the way around. This will be the, the front of the top I think. Yes, because we started on the back, didn't we? On the front, all the way around. Oh, get my hook in there. Now coming back to my next strap. And then I'm going to put my final single crochet along the neckline uh, in the same stitch 
with the slip stitch from where we joined the strap and then coming back onto the other strap I'm placing my two single crochets around each DC bar remember if your yarn is thinner you might be using three single crochets rather than two it's nearly finished now I've enjoyed making this one even my hubby saw it on the table last night and actually came to me and said I really like that on the table the colors I really like the colors I was like thank you because he normally thinks that everything I make is pretty crazy a bit wacky but he's used to it you know it is what it is but no he very much likes this one which is jolly good so I'm coming up to my final DC bar placing my two single crochets and that's brought me right back to the beginning and I'm going to go in the first single crochet with a slip stitch to attach it all together and that is it that is it everybody we have done another tutorial let's tighten that up just got two ends left to weaving because I've been very good and weaving my ends as I go because I can't deal with too many of them there we are I mean I can't quite fit it in we can just do a quick is it in is it in focus just about a quick little lovely and as you saw before when I did this bit around the edges my straps were a bit like that weren't they um, and now that I've put my single crochets around here, it's put them back up again. So, yeah, lovely. Thank you so much for joining me for another tutorial. So remember, if you are on Facebook or Instagram, please tag me at Craft and a Cuppa so I can see your beautiful creations that you've made. I love to see them and I love to share them. So there we go. There's another one. I'll see you again soon with another tutorial.